Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Lorna Smith. I'm one of the liaison librarians here um, at Newcastle University. Sorry, assistant liaison. And I will pass you over to my colleague. Yep. Uh, hello, I'm Louise. I'm another assistant liaison librarian. Uh, I work with the arts at the moment. Um, so if you're doing an arty subject, you might have seen me before. Yes, and I look after social sciences at the moment. That includes business school, um, architecture and GPS. So um, what are we doing today? We are going to look at the pros and cons of using Google and Google Scholar, um, which will be quite brief at the beginning. Then we're going to sort of discover all the different tools within Google so that you can use it wisely and how you can improve your search results. And we're going to be briefly looking at images and how to use Google Images, which is quite useful. Um, and just generally think about when is it appropriate to use it and when maybe you should be going to explore some of the resources we have here at Newcastle University, such as the databases. Google, pros and cons. There is pros and cons to anything in life, um, but there are particular um, pros and cons for using Google when at university and doing your research and doing your studies, doing your assignments, your dissertations, whatever it is. Um, it's easy to use, it's quick, it's free. It's, um, you can put your entire question in, which is wonderful. You don't need to worry about sometimes spellings, which I quite like because I'm not the best speller and it corrects it for you. Um, you can find um, official and primary, good primary sources. Um, it's good for evaluating sources, which I'm gonna go, I'll go into a bit more later. It searches the entire index web, web across which is wonderful and you think oh i'll be able to find everything i need here however some of the cons sometimes it's quite overwhelming you'll come back with like 10 million results and you're like how on earth am i supposed to find anything out of this um not all academic content is indexed which we'll come back to um and that's why we subscribe to certain databases um that sometimes the tools for limiting and doing your search, if you're looking for something quite specific, specific, sorry, is quite um, limiting, um, which we will show you when we go into these. Um, credibility, yeah. How do you know what you're using? If you're using material coming off of Google, how credible is it? You know, who wrote it? You might have to do some really good detective work to find out whether the, the author the website is credible, worthy of being in your university um, assignment you know, research. Um, they could be um, but have bias to it. They could be um, funded by a particular company. So hence they, they are pushing a certain view out to you. Um, it might be covered in adverts, trying to sell you something. Um, the, con the entire web is not organized by experts. They, it's, you know, people trying to sell you things, adverts, pushing material to you. Um, and sometimes personalization. So say if you have a, a Google account and they, it knows what your, um, you like, your preferences, your points of view, your um, ideas, it will skewer your results sometimes. Although when Louise and I did a practice this, it didn't seem to. <laughs> so um, either that or we have, both, we have very <laughs> similar points of view. Why don't I share? I'm going to share the Google versus. So this comes from our Google versus Google Scholar versus Google um, versus databases. This document was created by ourselves. Hopefully that link works. Um, this document is a little PDF that we created. And it goes through the pros and cons of Google, Google Scholar versus library databases. As you can see, there's many, many pluses underneath library databases. So um, it's a very useful. It's not something you need to, you know, refer to constantly. It's maybe something that you read once just to keep in the back of your mind when you're using um, Google or Google Scholar when um, researching for your um, university material. So um, as you can see, library databases has lots of pros to it. Um, which we're going to come back to um, 
Yes. Oh, the, the other thing that I mentioned, I think I just want to go in a little bit more, was about the, the searching laterally. So say you find some material on a website that you really want to use, but you're not too sure about it. And you think, well, you think it looks credible. It looks like a nice website. It looks like it's, you know, it's got a, maybe a .org after it. It's from an organization. You think, well, this is, you know, this looks like a good piece of information to use. What we're urging you to do in, is to use Google and use it as a, a discovery tool. So to really um, question the credibility of maybe something that you think looks credible and do a bit of investigative detective work about it, and which is what we call searching laterally. So look around it, Google, um, you know, use Google to um, get any reviews about that website. You know, is it been in the press? Is it been, you know, spoken about? Does it have credibility? Does it not? Is it worth using? Maybe you step away from that website completely and go, oh, dear, no, let's not use that at all. Um, yes. So um, what I really like using Google for, I'm just going to stop sharing here. What I particularly like using Google for is for scoping. I find it really useful if you have a research topic, an essay, maybe you're you're about to study for, you know, start um, attacking maybe your dissertation, really useful dissertations and thesis. Use it as a scoping tool as in to see what is out there, whether that's Google or Google Scholar, just to see who has written what, is the material out there, what words are they using to describe that topic. Um, I can sometimes put in the whole question in, which is wonderful. Quick, dirty searching just to see who is, you know, who's writing about what, is there any material out there? Then I can fill in an A4 page with just keywords that I've pulled from quick reading of um, articles, um, skim reading. And then I take those and then I put those into um, the databases and use our library resources because I know that my library resources are credible, reliable, authoritative, you know, it, it's reliable material that I can safely use in my um, assignments. So pros and cons, use that PDF, have a think about it, but yes, definitely pros to using it, which I think we're going to talk about now. So I'm going to pass you over to Louise, who's going to look at and Google and how to use it wisely. Again, just to quickly show you some of the tools that are available for you to use on Google. Um, so we're just looking at, at Google to start with, not Google Scholar, because uh, there's slightly different tools available for both. So um, a couple of search tools that are just available on Google. Um, you've obviously got the information type tabs, which you'll find along the top when you do the search. I will do some examples of these in a moment. Um, there's also a selection of tools which change depending on which tab you're on that you can use to um, refine your results. There are lots of advanced search commands or advanced search functions you can use with Google as well to make your results more relevant. Something called verbatim, and you can also set up search alerts. So I'm gonna do an example now to show you what that looks like. So I can, okay, can you see my internet browser now? Yes. Yes, excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to do a very basic search for um, climate change. Um, and as I said, along the top here, underneath the search box, you have your different um, tabs for different information types. So obviously you've got, um, you've got your news tabs. So if I want to look for information about news on climate change, I can use that one. Um, you've got your images tab for images, obviously, um, does what it says on the, on the tin books as well are here. So you can see what kind of books are out there in Google Books. Um, now, as I said, you also have um, tools. So you can see the tools button just here underneath the search box. If I click that, um, you will be given some filters to use um, to help you to narrow down your results. So when you're in the all menu, um, you get any times so you can choose to limit by date. Um, and you also get this all results or verbatim. So verbatim is one of the things I had on my list. Um, now verbatim basically stops Google for looking um, for synonyms or variations on the terms that you've put in, and it only searches for that particular word. And it'll also stop um, the dropping of terms. So I don't know if you've noticed, you probably have, I'm sure. When you do a search, you might get something um, like this popping up here. 
So it says missing O2, you must include O2, and you can click that to make sure it doesn't miss those words out. If you want to do that from the start, the easiest way to do that is to go to tools, all results, and verbatim. And that will make sure that it includes all of your search terms while you're searching on Google. So that's just a useful little trick to use. Um, so if I go back to my climate change search. Now, when you're in, oh, we've lost books, interesting. Let's put shopping at the top. Does that say something about my personalization? Um, so when you're in, uh, if I can go to news this time, uh, we go to tools, you can, you get this um, date range again, and you also get by relevance or by date here. So with news, all you can really sort by is the date, essentially. So again, it's, it's limited, but it's something. Um, if you go to books, you can see if you can get a full view of the book. So you can see whether the full text is available through Google Books or not. Um, you can look at books, magazines, newspapers. So it gives you a little bit more of um, the information types you can filter by. And again, you can filter by the date. Um, although it's quite broad dates there. You've got the whole century to search for, which is, is not going to limit your results very much, but it's something. Um, again, videos, that'll be slightly different as well. So you get duration when it was published, quality, so if you're looking for just high quality videos and so on. Um, images have a few other tools, but I'm gonna leave that for a little bit later when we're actually looking at Google Images so you can see the things that you can do with that. So the tools box is really helpful if you're trying to just narrow down the results you've got quite quickly. Something else you can do um, is repeat important terms in your search. So I could put climate change, climate, um, and that would just increase the number of results that include climate. Um, you can also change the order of your results and you'll get slightly different results as well. I'll go back here. So instead of looking for climate change, I put the claim change climate and the results that come up might be a little bit different. So again, it's just different ways of using your keywords and your search terms to find information on this um, page. The next thing we're gonna look at is advanced search. Um, and you can find advanced search by going to settings. And advanced search pops up in the corner here. So again, it's, it's, it's a little bit of an odd advanced search and um, it doesn't look very much like advanced search in library search, for example, the, the way they word it's slightly different, um, but it can be a really good way to focus your results a little bit more. Um, so if you're going to put something um, in the first one, so all these words, that means all of those words need to be included verbatim in your search. Let me put climate change back in. Um, if there's an exact word or phrase you're looking for, um, you can put that in there. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Um, but if you wanted, for example, climate change to be searched as a phrase, so you're not looking for the two words separately, you might prefer to put it in here. So it searches for the full phrase. If there's any additional words you'd like to include, um, these are probably um, more your synonyms. So other words for climate you might want to look for, uh, or you might want to include something like um, pollution, uh, plastics, you could add the additional terms in here. If there's anything you wanted to exclude, you could put that in this box here. Um, it also gives you the option to include a number search. So if I was looking for, um, I don't know, I have no idea what numbers are involved in climate change. I'll leave that to your imagination. Um, but you can put those in there. Um, and then you can narrow your results by these options here. So we've got language, um, region, last time it was updated, and so on. The site or domain option is quite useful because that means you can focus your search on more reliable websites. So, for example, you could put in here um, .org um, so that you'll be searching primarily for websites like charities or open source projects, educational platforms, things like that. Um, I'm going to limit my language to English because I'm terrible and that's the only language I can speak. I'm going to pop that in there. And I'm going to also filter my last update. I'm going to look just up to a year ago because I just want the newest stuff. You can also filter by file types. So this is quite interesting if you're looking for particular types of information. So you can filter by um, a PowerPoint, for example, if you're looking for presentations. If you filter by um, 
an Excel document, you're probably going to get stats and that kind of thing. Um, if you're looking for PDFs, you're more likely to get research or um, government papers, that kind of thing. Um, so as you can see, you can choose from lots and lots of different file formats. I'm going to stick to PDF. Um, and then you can also choose to look at usage rights. This is very handy if you're looking at images. I'm not going to go into this very much here because we'll talk about it more with images. Um, but if you are planning to reuse any of this information, particularly if it's, for example, um, an Excel document with um, statistics in that you might want to reuse, you might want to consider which one of these is going to be most useful for you in terms of copyright um, problems. What you'll notice on the side here, um, it tells you what each of these, these different things do, um, but it also gives you what we call advanced search commands. So for example, can you make it, make hmm? it a bit bigger? Is it tiny, is it, sorry? Mm -hmm. It's a little bit tiny. Awesome. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Um, so you can see if you wanted to just type this out into the Google search bar itself, if you want to put exact words in quotes, that will search for your phrase. Um, if you wanted to keep a word out, you put a little minus sign in front of it. If you wanted to do this in numbers, you can just use the two dots. So you don't have to actually come into advanced search. You can use these commands instead. And I'm going to um, share a link with you, this link here, which actually, hold on, I've lost the chat. Um, bear with me. Where have you gone? Chat. So this link here will give you all of the um, advanced search commands that Google offers. So that if you'd rather do that than go through the advanced search itself, you can. Um, so if we have a little look at what that does, so I'm going to click search. And, and we've got still quite a lot of results coming up, 1, 157,000, still quite a lot. But I'm pretty sure when I first did this search, it was probably in the millions. Um, so it does limit, and you can see we've just got PDFs coming up just from .org sites. So it gives you very specific information types and perhaps more reliable information if you're thinking about where you're actually searching. So that's something um, useful to bear in mind when you're doing your searches. The last thing I wanted to mention is search alerts. So if you have um, a Google account, what you can do is you can create a search in here and then set up an alert for it. So if you if you go through the trouble of creating a really long search string with all of those advanced search commands in, you can then save it. And if something new pops up, Google will send you a message to let you know um, that there's new information available. So it's a useful way for keeping up to date. You can do that on a lot of academic databases. And this is just a way that you can do it on Google as well. Um, I'll pop that link in the chat as well. So I keep losing the chat. Okay, there we go. So there's just a few different things that you can do with, um, with Google. The links are in the PowerPoint to some of those things as well, so you can catch them later on if you need to. Um, I've also put in some of the most common advanced search commands that you can use if you are interested in looking at some of those. Um, a couple that weren't on the advanced search there uh, was in text and title in URL. So you can actually search for things that are just in the title of particular files as well, which can be quite useful. Um, you've also got the asterisks, which can stand in for terms if you're not sure exactly what word it is you're looking for. So just some really useful tools that, that you can use. Google image search, um, depending on what I've had all sorts of students asking regarding images and using images in their work. It doesn't have to be art students or architecture students. It could be, you might be in medicine, you might be in engineering, you know, the list is endless. Nine times, you know, at some time in your university career, you will be needing to use um, images within your research. And it is very extremely very tempting to use Google to find images. We're not saying that you shouldn't completely. However, we're, we're warning, just a little warning, just to be careful using Google images and to always, 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 always reference it, no matter what. 
So just make sure if you are using Google Images, you need to reference it always in your assignments. So things to look out for. Um, yes, copyright. So just because it's on Google doesn't mean it's copyright free. And there are laws against using copyrighted material, especially in um, you know, published materials. So eventually, if you want to go on and do your you're doing your PhD and you're publishing papers and you're using images from used from another source, such as a, a website on Google, those images have copyright um, license um, surrounding it, unless it has been given, you've been given permission to use it, or it has a Creative Commons license around it. You need to be super, super careful regarding using images in published material. Uh, in an education setting, you can get away with using images that you find. However, as I said, you need to reference it. Um, fakes and edited originals. Yes, um, the, the internet is awash with images that have been altered slightly. The colors have changed. Oh, you, you name it, that they'll have done something to it. So depending on why you need the image, just be careful which version of it that you're using. Um, Hidden license collections. Louise, what do you mean by that one? <laughs> Please roll <wrote> my slides. <laughs> uh, the controls keep vanishing on me. Um, just that um, certain image collections, so things like museum collections, archive collections, they won't actually be available on Google. So if you're looking for good quality images, for example, in history of um, particular statues or historical artifacts um, or things from historical houses, they're not likely to be archived on Google. So you will have to look elsewhere for those kinds of images. Yes, um, we have an images guide that can help you with that sort of thing as well. Um, images overwhelm, you will be inundated with versions and um, you know images of a particular thing that you're trying to look for. So, you know, being aware of the different, um, it goes back to the, fakes and edited originals, there will be various versions of it. And um, you know, you'll be inundated when you do a Google search, an image search for things. So just sometimes it's it's nice and quick and easy. However, there are um, caveats to doing it. So just maybe being more careful and you know exploring the different image resources that we have here in the library might be useful. So I'm just going to do a very quick um, Go to Google Images, share my screen. So to find Google Images, you literally Google Google Images and it will come up as a um, site. Now you can search for images of a giraffe, for example, and you will be able to filter by what kind? Oh, I want a pregnant giraffe. I want a cute giraffe. I want a clip art giraffe. Uh, you know, the list is endless. So hence use the filters along the top. Um, I might as well show you now whilst I'm here in, um, I always forget where it is. It's in tools, yes. There is a tools function just like Louise has shown you for regular Google search. And within here, you can filter by size, by color, maybe I just want black and white images of giraffes. And now I have black and white images of giraffes. Um, as I said, type, um, when they've been added, usage rights. This is my favorite one. So as I spoke about, copyright is a real problem unless they have Creative Commons license. Creative Commons is um, it's a worldwide um, license that people can give. I've given Creative Commons license to my own material. You can give Creative Commons to anything that you've created. And it just basically, uh, different various licenses. I don't really have time to go into it, but feel free to go and explore it. Um, but however, you can filter your results to items, images of giraffes that have a Creative Commons license. Now, quite often with Creative Commons, the most common one is that you can use it as long as you say where you got it from. Um, but you need to explore that image and see what kind of license it has. Um, but it's quite an easy way of using images that are, co are copyright, not copyright free, but they have a license to it that enables you to um, use it um, without having to worry too much that you're breaking copyright rules. So tools, 
you can change search for a type of image use the tools you can search by creative commons license what else you can do in google images is you can do a reverse image search so i had a student oh i think it was last year that was trying to reference an image that they had found somewhere but they couldn't find the original um, location of where that image had come from. So they couldn't find the source of it, so they couldn't reference it properly. So um, what I did was I took the image, I uploaded an image, like I'm about to do here. Where's my image that I uploaded? Wonders of laptops. There we go. So I have done an image search, a reverse image search for this. I have taken an image that I had. I have done uploaded it into image Google Images. I've done a reverse image search. Rather than you searching for the image, you already have the image. Now it will tell you about it. And it says that 707 results. And it will give you similar images that you can go and have a look at. Um, so it was really useful for the student. We found it straight away where the source was, what gallery it came from, so they could reference it correctly. So just uh, another option for there for you to use. Um, creative, what we're also recommending is that yes, you can use Google Images. However, um, we have an images site. So let me just go to library homepage and under um, resource guides, we have our images, here we go, images. And here we have major collections. So Bridgman Education is one perfect one for gallery collections of paintings, posters, artifacts, you name it. Um, it will take you through the library catalog because we subscribe to it. But all the images there you can safely use within your um, academia. Um, as long as you reference it. And I'm going to search for the same artist and it will come up with a lovely collection of paintings and by that artist that I can download and upload into my um, assignment as long as I reference it. Another way of finding images is the Creative, Creative Commons images have changed. It's called now Openverse and you can search for images. Um, so if I to put my giraffe again, I'm looking for images of giraffes. You can also find audio if I want some audio of a giraffe. And these have all got the Creative Commons license that you can go and use and explore. So I think that's images. I'm going to stop my sharing. And Google Scholar, it's every student's favorite friend. So I use it. I use it all the time as a librarian. I use it, however, I use it wisely, just like Google, like I spoke about before. It searches a wide range of scholarly literature, so it will, you know, it has you know access to all of open access material plus more. Um, it's quick and easy, free, just like Google searching. You can apply search techniques just like you do in databases with your ands and ors, your Boolean searching with your quotation marks. Um, you can create search alerts. You can search, search cited by, which I'm going to show you. Oh, I found the button to do the reverse image search. Yes, I will show you quickly. Hang on, let me go back. Go to Google Images. And it's the little camera. Search by image. That's how you do it. You can either paste the URL of an image or you can upload an image. So it's Google Images. Click on the little camera. You can do a citation export into the likes of EndNote or Mendeley. Um, you can also use Zotero, obviously, as well. And there are other reference management tools out there. Um, you can link it to your library. So um, Newcastle University Library can also be linked to it, and it will give you links to um, any articles that are available within library search. However, cons. It, not everything is on there. That This is why we subscribe to all these wonderful, beautiful databases, because not everything is available on Google and Google Scholar. Students constantly think that they can get by with just using it. You probably could. However, you're missing a whole wonderfulness of all the material that we subscribe to. And your, your assignments would be much richer, 
and um, more academically rigorous because you have used a much wider range of resources rather than just restricting yourself to Google and Google Scholar. The filter functions, the sort functions are pretty, are shocking. I don't think there's much else to say, as, as in the, the search, the, the comparatives such as our databases like Scopus, the, the filter function is just not there compared to, you know, in Google Scholar. Um, it's not as powerful. It will not refine your results. You, you will be overwhelmed constantly because the results are just always hundreds and thousands and millions. Whilst when you're using our databases, yes, you will retrieve a lot fewer results. However, depending on your search, your results will be much more relevant, much more focused on your topic. Um, it's difficult to identify peer reviewed. So articles that are of very high quality, whilst our databases um, um, quite often are only peer reviewed or there's a filter function to refine your results. Um, yet yeah, not organized by experts, whilst databases are um, fill, um, what was it? free full text content only available from open access sources. Yes. So um, sometimes, yeah, they're breaking copyright laws. So um, for us librarians, it doesn't sit well um, that we don't like using um, material that isn't copyright um, compliant. I know it's tempting and sometimes we do have to, um, um, yes, use databases as well. I think I'll stop ga um, gas in there, um, but Google Scholar has its place and I like using it, especially to find full text of material that isn't available on our databases. So I, I tend to use Google Scholar as a scoping ex exercise. I take all those lovely keywords and things go off into my databases, find, you know, use, do a much more focused search. But however, every so often, some of the resources I find don't have the full text. I go back into Google Scholar. I see if the full text is available safely, copyright compliant. If not, then I get an into library loan. If you haven't used Google Scholar before, just like all the other ones, you just Google it, <laughs> just type in Google Scholar and it will come up with um, the function. So we can do a big long sentence search within here, or I can do a bit, yeah, I can do a basic search of climate change penguins. Oh, and again, that's a wonderful thing because it, it shouts at me and says, no, you spelt it wrong. So it corrects my spelling for me, as always. Although the databases do that as well. They highlight it and say, ah, ah Lauren, you spell it wrong. Um, I can do a basic search. It's come up with over 20, almost 29,000 results very quickly. However, compared to live research and our wonderful databases, there is, you know, uh, there's only so much refinement I can do here. I can do a custom range. Uh, I can sort by relevance or by date. Uh, I've got review articles. I can create an alert if I've gotten a really good search. However, that is it. You know, it's not really much I can refine my results by. And, you know, and 28,000 is a lot of results. Um, what you'll see on the right-hand side is the find at Newcastle. So my, my um, Google Scholar is linked up with library search. How do you do that? You go into... Um, Oh, da, 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 da. it's my library no not my library oh. where is it settings thank you settings and library links and it will um if it doesn't give you an option just search for um newcastle university and it's find at newcastle and that's um you can add that search for it and add it to your and save it as your links to our library and it will help you find resources that we have here as well, as I said, you can create alerts and it will email you any new items that come on a regular basis. As I said, you can get the site, you can get the citation. Nine times out of 10, the citation is a bit wrong. So I know that Harvard reference style is not um, the Harvard at Newcastle style. It's missing brackets around the date. It shouldn't have a full stop there. However, it gives me the bulk of that reference style. It lets me export my citation to EndNote, uh, Ref Management, RefWorks, and BibTeX. What I do like sometimes is the cite by. So 
I can look at that article and look at its references, um, but then I can also, so this one was written in 2001, and since 2001, 472 other research articles, books, whatever, have cited this particular article in their bibliography. So if they've cited that in their bibliography, I would have thought it'd be about the same topic. A high number doesn't necessarily mean that it's um, a good, oh, well, it's been cited 472 times. It must be amazing. Not necessarily. It might be citing it because it's rubbish. So um, just be careful. Um, but you can click on that and you can go and explore those 472 articles. Um, you can get related articles. It will take the main keywords out of that and it will go off and do another search. So maybe quite useful. I can click up find at Newcastle and it will take me off to get the full text. Um, even though it didn't. Oh no, it's in nature. Yes. Um, so a little bit you can do, however, not a huge amount. So there is an advanced search. So if I go back to Google Scholar, it's in there underneath on the left hand side, there is an advanced search. So say, for example, just like Louise showed in Google, um, it's very similar. So I can put climate change penguins as all the words. And then I with uh, at least one word I want rock hopper and uh, without the words emperor. And I want anywhere in the article. And I want the dates from 2012 to 2022. So I've you know, edited my search and now I've only got 817, but I'm hoping that they're gonna be much more relevant to um, my result, you know, to my topic that I want to do. You can go back and you can edit that. So say if I want it in the title of the article, and then I only get two, but those two might be absolutely perfect, might be amazing. Um, and there's anything else to show you? I'm going to pass you over to any questions about that at all before I change. So, yes, use Google Scholar. You can do simple searches. You're going to do advanced searches, link up to the library, use the cited by. The, there is quite a bit you can do. But you can do much more in some of our databases. So I'm going to stop sharing and pass it over to Louise. Thank you, move along. Um, so yeah, so you've seen that Google Scholar and Google both have um, a lot of pros and cons. Um, so yes, do feel free to use them in your research. But we would highly recommend that you also think about using some of the alternatives to Google that are available through the library. Remember, because Google doesn't find everything, and ultimately, because of all the problems around or the limits around um, refining your search or sorting your search results, you're probably going to end up spending a lot more time wasting your time searching on things like Google Scholar or Google and getting lost and mired in all that information. And if you actually go to a very specific database tailored for the kind of information that you need to find. So the library subscribes to lots and lots of useful resources that are all designed for academic research. So these will allow you to focus your search either on a specific subject or a particular type of resource. Um, so for example, we have um, databases that focus just very specifically on history. So it's called historical abstracts and that's exactly what it gives you. So if you're doing history, that's perfect. You can go straight to that. Um, you will find all of these very subject specific resources on your subject guides. So there is a link to that on this slide or you can find it through the library website and under resources and study support. Do have a look at that. It'll list all of the databases we have access to for your subject. And um, when you're searching in that, because Google searches very broadly, um, so it covers all, all um, subject areas. If you're using a subject-specific database, you'll get less results and more specific results. So it's useful to use things like that. Um, resource types. So for example, if you're looking just for images, you could use Bridgman, as Lorna showed you earlier. Um, but we also have resource um, guides for things like newspapers. Um, so, you, you know, the, the news tab on Google can be useful, but you will find that when you click on lots of those news resources that they're behind a paywall and you can't actually read them. So have a look at our news um, guide. 
and you'll be able to access all of those for free. You don't need to pay for anything. Um, there's lots of useful stuff on there around news. Um, there's also things around company information, um, maps, all sorts. So definitely worth a look. Um, these databases are also going to have really good filter options, as Lorna was saying, you know, they're going to help you really refine your search um, to get much more relevant results more quickly. Um, and they also include all of the useful tools that Google Scholar has. So you can still do cited by searches in particular in, in um, Scopus or in EBSCO databases. You can save favorite articles, you can save your searches, you can still set up alerts for searches. Um, and you can do all that citation exporting as well on these databases and lots more usually as well. There's normally lots of other little tools in there that can just help really make um, your research a little bit more effective. So we do strongly recommend that you take a look at your subject guide and your resource guides and just kind of use them together. So you, you're going to look at, um, as Lona said, using Google as a kind of scoping tool um, for finding things that maybe aren't available through the library, for getting those keywords but then going into the academic databases to save yourself time and to make sure you're finding all the relevant information as you're doing your search. So just to finish off, um, to summarize our top three Google tips. Um, the first one is if you are gonna use Google, save yourself some time um, and use some of those advanced search um, tools or the advanced search commands that I linked to earlier to help you find your search, to get those search results down to stop you being overwhelmed by all the information that's out there. The other thing we really recommend is to link your Google account to the Newcastle University Library. Um, so that was the, the linking um, option that Lorna just showed you on Google Scholar. It means that you're going to get quick access to the links that are available um, to library search to the full text resources. It just saves you hunting around and not knowing whether or not you're reading the latest version or the most official version of something. Um, and it stops you getting um, stopped at paywalls as well when you're on Google Scholar. It's just a nice, easy way. If you prefer searching on Google Scholar, link it to the Newcastle Library and you'll be able to access the resources through our subscriptions a lot faster that way. And the last search tip is basically just remember to be critical while you're when you're evaluating your search results. Remember, Google isn't designed for academic research. Even Google Scholar isn't created by experts in the field. So there's no guarantees that the information you find using Google is going to be reliable or authoritative. So always remember to take a critical approach. Um, maybe use something like the CRAAP test, so that's C-R-A-A-P, um, to help you evaluate what you find. So you're looking at the currencies, how up to date is it? Uh, the authority who wrote it, um, are they an expert or are they linked to, um, for example, a business or a company that maybe might be biasing their results? Is what's written accurate? Can you find similar results on other places, similar arguments with similar facts? Um, and the purpose. So why was it written? What was, what's the reason behind it? What, are they trying to sell something or are they just sharing research? And use that lateral searching to find and confirm facts and authority when you're doing your research as well. <laughs>